In the recent weeks, months, and years, a lot of Canadians have been watching their once well-regarded country become what some are even calling tyrannical. It happens slowly and then all at once. And today I'm gonna to share with you nine steps to escape Canada. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. And for a quarter of a century around my family's kitchen table and nearly a decade now publicly, I've been talking about the slow death of the West. But for so long, many people, especially those outside of the United States, which taxes its citizens no matter where they go, ignored the idea of saying, hey, Canada is still a pretty great place to live. Why would I want to go to some up and coming country just to reduce my tax bill? What freedom am I losing? What worries do I have? And we've seen in the last couple of years, and specifically just in the last couple of weeks and months, how countries like Canada and Australia have totally flipped the script. Many people believe they're not even free democracies anymore. Now, I'm not going to weigh in on that because I believe you need to make your own assessment. But I do want to talk to you, if you're a Canadian, about how you can get out of the system, how you can protect yourself. As someone who's worked with uh, plenty of Canadians and close to a thousand clients over the number of years, I want to share with you not only the strategic steps, but some of the personal steps that you're going to want to take over the process. And the first thing before we get into the steps is understanding, do you want to have a plan A, i.e. are you planning on leaving Canada? Are you getting out? Are you saying, I'm done? Or are you putting together a plan B? Are you building infrastructure that where you can leave in the future? Now, plan A is always a little bit easier because what I've said is better years too early than a day too late. We've seen so many times again and again that stuff creeps up on you. You know, that um, you know, geopolitical issue that breaks out, uh, the new tax, the freeze of your wealth, all these different kinds of things can happen in overnight. They can happen in a week. You want to be prepared. And so plan A always gives you more preparation. You'll always be ahead of the game, but plan B certainly is a way that you can at least be more prepared than most people. So the first thing that I would look at, seeing what happened in Canada where they just came in and froze people's bank accounts and misused the Emergencies Act was you want to move your bank accounts. Now I know some people like cryptocurrency. I believe, I mean, if whether you have Bitcoin, whatever, put that in a ledger, maybe the ledger goes somewhere else. Maybe there's a vault somewhere else. But let's just talk about bank accounts. I think having a bank account is still valuable. Get a bank account somewhere else. Now, I'm not saying you're going to hide your money. There are going to be some requirements for how you keep that bank account in compliance with Canada, especially if you live there. So we're not talking about Wolf of Wall Street you know, style hiding your money uh, overseas. But there are plenty of bank accounts, whether you've got you know, just a couple bucks to deposit in a country like uh, uh, Georgia or Ecuador, or whether you've got more money to deposit, you can work your way up to uh, various Caribbean islands, to Singapore, to uh, Switzerland, to the UK. Uh, there's all kinds of banks around the world, whatever your uh, amount is. So move some bank accounts. You can worry, and by the way, this is not legal advice, but you can worry in most cases about more complicated structures like offshore trusts later. First, have a bank account somewhere else. Have some money. And, and preferably, don't let it be one of these you know, weird offshore accounts with crazy high fees. Make it be a regular account in a real country where you get a real ATM card and then figure out whether you're in Canada or whether you're watching this from somewhere else, what are the legal requirements if I have to report that account to my country. You may have to pay tax on any interest that you earn, which can often be much higher in other countries. So make sure you're following all the local rules and regulations, at least until you exit your country's tax system, but have a bank account or multiple bank accounts offshore. The second thing I would think about if I'm concerned about uh, what's happening in my country is find a way to be location independent. And so uh, if you have a job, that's obviously more difficult. Can I do this job remotely? Uh, can I do a freelance version of this job remotely? Can I make this a business and do remotely? Do I've got a side hustle that I can put extra effort into and make that side hustle replace my income? Keep in mind, Canada is one of the most expensive places in the world to live. You could go to a country. I mentioned Georgia. Let's take that as an example. If you, you know, were able to take some money off and just buy a small apartment in Tbilisi, Georgia, you could probably live there for $1,000, $1,200 a month to a, a relative Western standard. Now, obviously, we have inflation right now. That number could go up. But, I mean, you could live in existence that you it would cost you three or $4,000 in Canada for probably, you know, one-third of that or even less in some cases. But figure out how to make yourself location independent. And, again, possibly lower cost of living if you were just starting out could could help facilitate that. Um, I think a lot of businesses, number one, should be less dependent on Canada. 
we work with people from all over the world here at Nomad Capitals. And so no matter what happens in one part of the world, I have flexibility. I have a certain resilience. But I would also look at, can you walk away from an on the ground business? A business like Nomad Capitalist can work anywhere. We can simply move around the world. If you have a factory, maybe you can find out how to remove yourself from that factory to where the factory keeps running with your local team who perhaps doesn't share your concerns about what's happening in Canada. That business keeps running, but you're managing it from afar. People did it during the pandemic, and I think that shows that you can do it now. So even if the business is on the ground, even if you've got a job on the ground, think, try and find creative ways to where you can physically leave the system. The third thing that I would look at doing is selling assets. Okay? One of the things that I consistently talk to folks about, they'll come to me and say, I don't trust the country. I don't care if that country is the US, Australia, Mexico, what have you. And time after time, I've talked to folks who have you know, their entire wealth in 10 rental properties in the country, in this case, Canada. I say, you know, are you open to at least selling some of them to then diversify your investments and put some money overseas? It sounds like you're very concerned they're coming in and taking people's assets, they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And people, a lot of times, say no, I don't want to sell it. It's really hard to help that kind of person because you're telling me that you're worried they're going to come and grab everything. I would at least like to have some diversification. Now, again, you're entitled to think what you think about how bad things are going to get. But if you think that, you know, hey, my country's coming in just taking people's money, I probably wouldn't want 100% of it sitting there for them to push a button and say, yeah, we don't like you, we're taking it. And so if I could sell some assets like rental properties, if I could move some of my investments out of the local stock market and overseas, I would consider doing that. And that way I know that I have some diversification. Probably seeing that you know, real estate has, has hit a feverish pitch in Canada, does that continue in a, in a rate of, uh, or an environment of higher interest rates? Maybe, I'm not an investment advisor here, so don't take this as a financial advice, but maybe you take some money off the table. Maybe you think, hey, these values aren't sustainable to begin with. And you go and invest somewhere uh, where instead of almost everyone having a mortgage, only 10% of people have a mortgage, parts of Latin America, parts of Asia, where those asset values are more stable. Okay, So figure out how to, to potentially sell some assets if you're concerned about protecting them. Uh, the fourth step is physically leave. Okay, So you've got bank accounts somewhere else. You've got the financial infrastructure. You've moved some money into cash, ready to invest in other assets. You have location independence. Now it's physically leave. I think a lot of people... Again, happy to set up a plan B for someone, happy to help you diversify to where you have residences, citizenships, bank accounts, other stuff somewhere else. You don't have to physically leave, but if I'm trying to stay ahead of the game and I'm worried about what's happening in my country, I want to be out of that country because who knows what they could come up with? Who knows uh, what happens literally tomorrow? Who knows what, if I'm a taxpayer in my country, they say, you know what? Everyone is a taxpayer as of March 1st is uh, gonna be subject to a new wealth tax. Well. If you were out, you wouldn't have to worry if you were there on March 1st. They're literally pushing through retroactive taxes in countries like Canada and the US. They have literally done that. And so the idea that you want to stick around and hope that one day it's going to be better uh, or hope they're not going to catch you in that kind of stuff, hope they're not going to spring something new on you, I think physically leaving gives you the most um, probability against that. Uh, the fifth thing that I would suggest you doing is get yourself out of the tax system. Unlike Americans, at least for now, Canadians don't have to pay taxes no matter where they live. You can simply exit the country's tax system. That's something that us and our network do help people do. It's different for everybody. It requires a certain amount of sophistication in, in many cases. But if you exit the tax system and you do so cleanly, okay, then you know that whatever you're going to do outside of Canada uh, makes sense. By the way, physically leaving sooner than later means if you have assets that are increasing in value, a business that's increasing in value, um, you know, income that's coming in, you're going to be able to get more of that outside of the tax system in a place where you choose the tax rate, 0%, 1%, 5%, what have you. So the faster you leave, the faster that you can exit the tax system. Again, Americans don't have that luxury because they're taxed no matter where they live, even though there still are plenty of substantial tax exemptions and reductions for Americans, Canadians can simply leave the system and say, I'm out. And so if you did that, where are you now going to pay taxes? You probably want to set up somewhere where you can actually be a taxpayer. You don't want to be someone who's just traveling around the world one month here, one month here, and then you come back to Canada for four months. So you want to have a proper plan to exit the tax system, probably be in someone else's tax system. And that brings me to issue number six, have a residence somewhere, have a residence permit. Plenty of countries, for example, in Latin America, if you show them income, 600, 800, 1,000, 2,000, up to several thousand dollars a month. Most countries in Latin America have some kind of program. Now, Latin America is quite bureaucratic, um, but for someone who just has an income, it's gonna be easier to get into than let's say a country in Asia, for example, where they're more focused on your bringing wealth. It's gonna be 
perhaps easier to do tax planning in living in Latin America, depending on which country you choose, versus living in Europe. And you'll have more flexibility there. But there are plenty of countries around the world where you can get a residence, whether you don't have a lot of money and you just have an income. If you're Canadian, you will have enough income to get into most of the countries out there. If you have money to invest, you can buy real estate, you can get a golden visa, you can get an investor visa, you can get all kinds of different things, but get a residence permit. And so if you're using a plan A where you're exiting Canada now, then you can get a residence permit where, hey, I'll, space, I'll spend six months in your country. Uh, maybe there's a tax exemption or there's no tax on foreign income to where I, you know, I'm in your country for six months, I'm liable for tax, but there's no tax. If you don't want to go and move overseas right away, if you're doing the plan B approach, there's plenty of residences where you invest money. And we cover all these here on the channel. You invest money and you only have to be there for one day, seven days, 30 days a year to keep that residence permit active, but have a residence where you can call home. Because I think that, you know, nomadism of just traveling around the world is fine. Obviously became a bit more difficult during the pandemic, but even after the pandemic, what you're seeing is countries are being a bit more strict. Mexico will let you come in, but they want to see when you're leaving. It's no more of this, hey, just come in for 180 days and then leave for a day and then come back. They don't really like that anymore. And so some people will get away with it for a while, but they really are cracking down. Even if you say, here's my return ticket in five months, they might say, yeah, that's too much. Here's your three months. Come on in. And so nothing wrong with visiting Mexico, but if you want to live in Mexico longer term, you need to get a residence permit. I also think that's going to give you more stability to prevent you from then getting frustrated and returning to Canada. Having some place you can call home, even if you don't spend all your time there, and having the higher level of access that you're a resident, not a tourist, gives you a certain amount of certainty to where you can go and, and use that and continue your offshore plan and build from there. If all you want to do is live in Panama, then having Panama residence gives you that, and you can do that in a relatively tax-friendly way. If your goal is to live in one place for four months while you explore the whole region and find anywhere else you want to live, then you know at least you have a base, at least you know you can get in somewhere the next time they crack down on tourists coming in because of a pandemic or whatever happens next. The eighth thing I want to do, or sorry, the seventh thing I want to do is I want to have real estate somewhere else. And so, again, I see people who, you know, they, they feel... Um, disconnected because they had a house in Canada, which potentially you might want to sell if you're selling assets or if you're putting together a tax exit plan, it may be beneficial to sell or, or do something else with your house. Um, so having real estate somewhere else, I think number one introduces you to the world of offshore where you can buy property a lot more cheaply. I mean, there's just the equity in your house in Canada probably will pay for a pretty incredible house in many places. Have real estate in another place to give you some diversification, to give yourself a home that you're willing to go and live in. Um, if you don't, if you decide not to live there, then rent it out. But I think having real estate somewhere else is both a strategic step of putting some assets overseas that can be diversified, but a personal step of protecting yourself from, again, wanting to go back because you don't have a home. Uh, I can tell you in, you know, in my relationship, uh, Mrs. H likes having a home and she likes living in a home. And it's, I can tell you, it's more productive, quite frankly. As I get older, uh, I like having that. I used to be all over the world staying in hotels. I got sick of that, or Airbnbs, I got sick of that. So have a piece of real estate. Again, you could live there one, two, three, four months a year, as I do in some of my properties, or you could live there full time, but having the real estate gives you diversification and gives you certainty in your plan. The eighth thing you wanna do is back up your citizenship. So whether that means you're gonna claim citizenship by descent because you have an Italian relative or an Irish grandmother, or I've had people from Canada who have you know, Ukrainian family or, or Guyanese family or you know, Trinidad and Tobago, whatever it is, look at your parents, look at your grandparents, look at your great grandparents, do you qualify for citizenship that way? If not, are you gonna live in a country and become a citizen that way? Uh, can you get citizenship by investment, which we've covered? You make a donation, they give you citizenship in a matter of months. Um, are there other ways to get citizenship? You want a backup. So if Canada says, we're not going to renew your passport, that's a big topic right now is countries want to cancel passports. In the UK, they keep talking about wanting to cancel your citizenship. And 25% of Brits, for example, said, hey, if you do something bad enough that we don't like, hey, let's, just, let's just make you stateless. I mean, hey, why not? So having a backup citizenship from an agnostic country, preferably a low tax country, and certainly one that's not gonna bother you if you don't live there is beneficial. Having a second passport does not mean your taxes go away. Where you live generally determines your tax burden. But backing up your citizenship means that you are no longer bound to simply one country. By the way, there are places where you can buy real estate, get the backup citizenship. Not in the Caribbean, but places like Turkey, for example. There are countries where you can start a business and work towards citizenship. Hire employees. Plenty of things you can do to get that backup passport. So some of these steps will work together. My goal, if I'm advising you, is to try and figure out how many 
you know, different things can we do that, that knock up these nine steps pretty quickly. And then the last thing would be build a life outside of Canada. Have non-Canadian friends. Have people you can rely on. Um, start to accumulate bank accounts. Start to accumulate a property. Start to spend time. Open yourself up to, again, you don't want to be coming back. You don't want to be like, oh, I can't take it. I do work with people from time to time where they do it for a year and they just they can't get into it. And so they end up going back and they lose potentially hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions of dollars in tax savings. They lose the lifestyle benefits. They lose the adventure. They lose so much from living the nomad capitalist lifestyle. There's no right way to do this. You can move to one place and never leave. You can go and you know, live my trifecta method, spend four months a year in three places. You can be nomadic. You can be nomadic with the base. There's plenty of ways you can live this lifestyle. It doesn't have to be zero tax. It could be 5% tax, 10% tax. It could be higher. You choose how you do this, but you have to build some life outside of Canada. Don't just go and meet only Canadian friends. Go and expand your horizons. Go and invest in things that aren't Canadian. Go and just try other stuff. And I can tell you from personal experience, you're going to become more and more comfortable doing this. So if you want our help doing it, you can go to nomadcapitalist.com and see what our process is to work you through all these different steps because they have to be holistic. You can't just leave Canada for tax purposes and leave the rest up to, up to doubt. You have to have a holistic plan. But whether you're, you're looking for help right now or not, those are nine steps you can use to escape Canada, give yourself more freedom, take control of your money, and live the nomad capitalist lifestyle. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply. Learn about our unique tried and true process. Garnered over years of experience and learn how you can become our client.